Hey gamers, Maniac here with GameAccess.net. We are months away from what is expected to be the anticipated next game in the Halo franchise, Halo Infinite, for multiple platforms including the Xbox One, Windows PC, and the Xbox Series X and Xbox Series S. I am actually really looking forward to this game. I don't know what platform I'm going to get it on right now. I can't get my hands on an Xbox Series console to save my life right now, but needless to say, I'm still looking forward to playing it at the very least on my Xbox One. But I started thinking to myself, what else has been branching out in the gaming industry right now? I've talked about theme parks here on the uh, YouTube channel in the past, and I'd like to do it again for this video. Particularly because I felt like, you know, I forgot to do a Halo video about theme parks. I'm certainly qualified to talk about it. I've talked about Pokemon in the past and I was thinking to myself, well, what else is there to talk about? Halo. Halo works. And Halo works for a couple of reasons. Halo can work for a demographic that theme parks usually don't cater to. They're mostly interested for the, let's say the 12... Plus demographic. Usually when it comes to theme parks, a lot of the demographics for theme parks are usually either kids to adults that bring their kids. But I think that this is important to make it clear that I, when I was designing this park or this theoretical park, that, um, you know, this is a, this is a park that's meant for like people that are like 11 or 12 up. Now, obviously, we won't have age requirements, and I won't be age-gating people that are coming in. But there probably will be height requirements for certain rides and stuff like that. But if people want to come in, that you know, th this should be something that would be available to all people of all ages. So we wouldn't have any content that would be extremely, you know, inappropriate. There's just going to be some stuff that, you know, older people might enjoy better than younger people. That's fine. So I wanted to break this down into ride shows attractions. First, let's talk about the environment itself. I feel like you have to set this park up if you're going to do it as in universe. And I do think you can do this as in universe. Set it up as a UNSC recruitment location. You could say you're on a halo if you wanted to. I don't think in the, in the extended canon right now that the UNSC has officially established any bases on any Halos that can be traveled to because, let's be honest, the Halos are dangerous. But if you wanted to go there, I'd let you get away with it. I do think it's kind of annoying that you can establish, like, because there's so many planets out there, you know, in the Halo canon that you can establish an environment on, but they kind of... To say that they're not on a Halo would kind of fall into like a generic sci-fi tropes. And we don't want that. Say this is a Halo. It's been disarmed. You know, we're, we're you know people are visiting it right now for tourists and recreations. And, and the UNSC is in charge. Great. Fantastic. That allows you to use a mixture of UNSC and Forerunner architecture in the environment. And you're going to want that. I want to see more than just, you know, military type bases. Yes, we want to see warthogs driving around and we want to see mongooses driving around. We want to see all that. But we also want to see, you know, those big forerunner spires. We want to see stuff like that. Mix up, you know, we want to see like environments that look like this cave is not a natural formation kind of thing. You want to see the forerunner infrastructure, a mixture of the two. That visually would be very interesting. And we'll add Covenant environments as well. Don't, you know, we're going to get to that, but there will also be Covenant environments for you Covenant fans. Now, what did I have in mind? I was working on a good list um, before I started working on this video specifically. A lot of it was inspired by, of course, the Halo's um, uh, Outpost Discovery, which as far as I know, and this is another reason why I'm doing this video, I don't think Outpost Discovery is coming back, unfortunately. It happened in, for those of you who aren't aware, Outpost Discovery was an event that was done in multiple cities over the course of summer 2019. It did not come back for, 20, for 2020, and there have been no announcements for 2021. That's disappointing, especially given the fact of two things. This is why I don't think it's coming back. 
One, the app no longer exists on the App Store for your respective device. And two, the Halo Outpost Discovery website, the official website, is, is gone. There is no more Outpost Discovery website. So I honestly don't think that, that, that an organization, if they intended to bring it back, would allow you know, things like the app and their website to lapse. I just don't. Maybe it could come back in another form. But it won't be Outpost Discovery, basically. So, I, 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 as somebody who's been to Outpost Discovery and did video that was pretty thorough about it, I kind of wanted to throw my hat in the ring about what I think should come, you know, for this. And um, so I broke it down into two different types of things. Let's not talk about food for a second. We're going to, obviously there's going to be restaurants, but we're not going to be talking about that. That's not really interesting. That's not why you're here. You're interested in my ideas for rides and attractions. Now, I broke down attractions given the fact that there's a lot of opportunities for attractions in the Halo universe. Uh, stage shows could be a thing. Stunt shows could be a thing. Um, walking, you know, environments are a thing. Prop museums are a thing. All of these ideas are canonical to the Halo universe. Um, in many ways, as I'll break down to. I mean, Outpost Discovery itself is considered canonical to the, to the Halo universe. It did happen in the Halo universe, and Halo will reference it. Um, but um, as for other stuff that I wanted to bring over, um, I wanted to do bring back the Hall of History, specifically for an attraction. I wanted there to be a giant Halo museum of like all of the great UNSC props, all of the great Covenant props, from the Halo Wars, basically. You want to be able to walk into an environment. You want to be able to see a Scorpion tank. You want to be able to see a, a up-close uh, Warthog and an up-close Mongoose or a Gun Goose. You want to be able to see the shotguns hanging up. Yes, is this inspired by my love of those Halo 3 Believe ads? You can be damn sure it is. Absolutely. freaking lootly We have to bring that for real. And as far as I know, um, Microsoft has created props and replicas. They may have stuff that's still lying around. They could make more of it. Um, the Halo 3 Believe sculpture, at least a good part of it, still exists in Microsoft's archives. I would love to be able to actually lay my eyes on that sculpture again. It's a piece of art that should be that basically belongs in a museum. So let's have a museum to put it in. Um I mean, Disneyland has a, has a has a place where you can see all the Star Wars props and stuff, and I'm pretty certain Disney World does as well. Um, you know, there's places that you can see Marvel props, like uh, there's a Marvel Avengers station in Vegas where you can see you know props, either you know original ones and replicas. This would be the perfect place to have a Halo, you know, basically have a Halo environment where you could show these props, basically make a real Hall of History. That's, that's, I think, the first thing that came to mind. As for other stuff about attractions, I kind of want to get... Let's, let's take a step ahead. Um, I want to talk about my next major stuff, and that's, of course, going to be rides. We want to have rides. There's got to have to be rides. I'm not going to have spinny rides. I'm not going to have kitty rides. I'm not going to have a carousel. It's like a, a Ferris wheel, a carousel. I, I thought about it. Sp you know, teacup rides. None of that fits Halo at all. It doesn't work. And so I think that that's going to basically be like, you know, the zero to nine demographic, basically. They're going to want spinny rides, carousels, that sort of thing. This is going to be a park made up of thrill rides, both simulators and roller coasters. This is where we're going to get interesting. Now, I couldn't think about roller coasters. How, how do you do a Halo roller coaster, basically? Well, you build an environment that's meant to be the Halo environment with distinctive Halo-ish features, like Forerunner architecture or something like that, and you build a, Halo, a, a, a roller coaster inside of it. And there are some theme parks, like Six Flags theme parks, have like 10 roller coasters, have like three roller coasters, five roller coasters. You can do a bunch of roller coasters, all different designs. You know, some of them could be inverted. Some of them could be launch coasters. Some of them could be, dang, you know, coasters where you dangle. Some can be flying coasters. There's all different ideas. As long as it's a badass roller coaster in a cool-looking environment, 
you could you can make it you can have multiple roller coasters basically work this could be a coaster capital or a new coaster capital obviously roller coasters cost money but microsoft has more than enough let's be honest and it would certainly make up its right you know the the coaster enthusiasts would be very interested but i gotta tell you i would freaking love to be able to basically launch a roller coaster through forerunner tunnels past forerunner architecture into a U straight into a UNSC base and then go back, you know, and then do a different one, which was different environment or something. That would be really, really cool. So that was the first ideas that I had. Basically, we'll do roller coasters. Obviously, next we need to have a simulator. Halo Outpost Discovery did have a really good Pelican simulator. However, theirs was interactive. The Pelican simulator that they had wasn't so much a ride as it was an interactive game, but they did do a really good job of recreating the, the interior of a hold of a Pelican craft. Put it, bring it back. Basically, just bring it back, make it a ride. Strap them into the seat and shake the thing. You could have either a viewing port on one end, you could have screens basically giving positions so that the the play you know the people that are in the cockpit holds would know what's going on. You can make it canon like okay we're gonna fly you up and we're gonna fly you around you know the halo rings and stuff like that give you like a like a bird's eye view of what the rings look like and all that stuff that would you know they'd come across you know environmental hazards or something like that maybe natural and you know like the blind wolf or something like that or some of the things that we've seen in the Halo, um, in the Halo Infinite teaser where there was actual life on the Halo rings. Where they came from, I don't know, but, you know, it was there. That would be pretty cool. You could have a, you could have a couple of simulators basically doing that. Think of it like Star Tours, but Halo. I'd be fine with that. At least for one ride. Just one ride, I'd be fine with that. Uh, next one. Uh, this one was inspired by, um... This one will be more inspired by, Halo, by by Disney's Animal Kingdom. But for those of you who might remember Kilimanjaro Safaris in uh, Animal Kingdom. Basically, you'd be in this large safari vehicle that would drive through a safari environment, which was, of course, artificial, but it was still a safari environment. And you'd be able to look at live animals, basically. Now, obviously, we're not going to have live animals. But I did like the idea about getting something that was the level of a tour bus or a party bus, basically, and have it go through a restricted environment where it would ha where it would interact with either um, pre-programmed events, random events, or just artificial environments. So you would be driving, you would basically be driven, I should say, through this. Um, through this back, you know, this wild area of, of Halo, this wire of the Halo ring, and maybe you'd come across a Covenant versus UNSC, you know, a Covenant Remnant versus US, UNSC battle, where you basically see a whole bunch of guys, you know, following you on gun uh, on mongooses and gun gooses and warthogs saying, what the heck are you doing out here? Covenants have dropped in and they're, 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 not, they're not here to play around. This is a dangerous environment. And then you basically, as you move on, you would see the battle. And remnants of the battles, that would be that would require obviously live action actors and probably for the covenant you'd need, anim animatronics. Maybe you'd go into a dark area and have to encounter the flood, but it's okay at the very end they'd say it's okay, it's okay we've contained the flood or something like that because you don't want people walking around thinking the flood are still out there. You want to make sure it stays contained. So, yeah, obviously this would be something that would be great. Um, I would be fine with live action actors that would probably switch it from ride to attraction, but let's be, I, I honestly would be satisfied with animatronics. Um, I don't think screens would work. You would have to build sets. You would have to build, you know, spires and, 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 and but that could work, you know, building sets or, you know, it's immersive. You could, you can do that kind of thing. Basically you could drive through or drive around sets, you know, see the facades and and that would be I thought a really cool uh, a, a really cool ride. The last one I wanted to talk about. Okay, this you're gonna say this was heavily inspired by Rise of the Resistance. Yep, yep. I was thinking do Rise of the Resistance, but instead of on a star destroyer, do it on a UNSC sh you know ship 
like the Pillar of Autumn, basically, but probably some, but, but the environment, the interiors would be like the Pillar of Autumn. When there's a covenant battle in space, how you get up there, that's one thing. Maybe you could, you know, have a little simulator or something, or we'll do like an elevator or transporter or something like that. You can make it look like, oh, there's a space elevator taking you up to the, you know, to the ship. That's possible. You can certainly have, there are space elevators in, in the, um, in the Halo canon. It does exist. And they are easy, fast ways to get into orbit. Or it could be a ship that's docked that they're still working on, um, but it's been attacked by Covenant. That would be a great idea. You could build brute animatronics. You could build elite animatronics. Basically, you put these, you'd sit people down into these, you know, free pods that could float around on the ground. Again, kind of like Rise of the Resistance. And the idea is, is that, oh crap, the Covenant are, are attacking the ship. Let's get out of here. Let's take these transports and get, and get out of here. Um, and then along the way, you'd pass through the bridge. You'd pass through the corridors during, during a battle, during, you know, crossfire. You'd pass into the, the, um, I, I don't know if the word is cargo bay, but you basically see like the giant, you know, scorpion tanks. You'd see the warthogs all all, you know, secured. You'd hear the major, you know, the majors and everybody, you know, barking orders. Similar to what Johnson would say. And and then you'd, you'd see that, you know, you'd see the brutes drooling at you and attacking you, but you get out, you know, near escape, that sort of thing. That would be one hell of a ride. It would not be cheap to make. It would certainly be more, probably the most expensive ride to, to, to make in my, you know, for, for this thing, totally worth it though. You know, you got to have one of these. So you do an escape bat. It'd be fantastic. I'd love it. So those are some of my ideas for rides. Unfortunately, like I said, because I couldn't think of any spinny rides or anything, is that enough rides? I'm kind of on the fence about if that was enough rides. Like I said, we'd have a few roller coasters, basically. So it would be more than just one roller coaster. You'd have a few of them. Would that be enough rides for the park? Could more stuff be, be added? I don't know. Maybe you could do a different type of safari or something like that or, you know, that kind of thing. But they, there would be some things that you just couldn't replicate. But that's where I actually had... Didn't have too many ride ideas. Those were some of the best ride ideas I could come up with. But I did actually have a lot of attraction and show ideas. A lot of them. So I think that once you hear my, my attraction and show ideas, I think it would kind of balance itself out. One I mentioned before. I wanted to do the Hall of History. Basically a big Halo museum. Where you could walk around. And I'd be fine if they had the Omnimax Dome like they did for the um, for, for Outpost Discovery. Where you would simply watch the Halo, you know, the Halo, on an, you know, the Halo show specifically that was made by Falcon Creative, where you would watch that video inside the Hall of History. Bring it back; it'd be fantastic, as long as they made the projection brighter. <laughs> Second thing I had in mind was some stunt shows. I had one stunt show in mind that actually I think would work for a comedy stunt show, and that would be one that was inspired by Red vs. Blue. Obviously, it would be a live-action shunt show, but I think Red vs. Blue's writing could work in live-action. You would just simply have, you know, Church and Caboose and, Te you know, Tex and, and Griff and everybody basically just walking around, but they would be played by actors in suits, but you'd hear the recordings of guys like Bernie Burns and stuff like that, you know, as they were walking around. You know, there would be battles it's like hey you ever wonder what there, there would be but it would basically be voiceover over a stunt show and comedy stunt shows do work trust me go to a renaissance fair you could see you'll see it work obviously it would be on a stage there would be a you know a you know seating and everything for this show there would be intervals for where it to happen and it would be live performed by stuntmen and or actors but i think it could work really well and there's always use for levity and that type of thing. You you want to have at least one comedy show. And where better to do it than have Red vs. Blue write it? Or use some of the Red vs. Blue material 
with their permission, of course, and just, you know, do it in live action. It could work. There is, there's plenty of materials. A lot of them are just standing around talking. You know, hey, you ever wonder why we're here? One of the lives great mysteries, isn't it? It's some, a lot of it just works. You can have, just have one guy dressed up in, in a blue in a blue outfit, the other guy dressed up in a teal outfit, and just have them talk. It works. Next one I wanted to do was I wanted to see a Covenant uh, spaceship. Uh, I wanted to basically be able to explore a Covenant spaceship. Maybe we could do this type of thing basically a motion simulator through, but I figured walking would be fine enough. Where for Outpost Discovery, there was actually what was called the Covenant Escape Room, what I could describe as a Covenant Escape Room. Covenant environments and Covenant architecture has very unique properties to it. I say maybe you could be like, well, there's a Covenant uh, craft that's landed. Let's go check it out, basically. Oh, there's no Covenant left in there. They've all abandoned the ship. So we can check it out. It's totally safe. And of course, it's not safe. Bring that back. I, I'd like to see that environment brought back. You could do augmentation with like things like HoloLens and stuff like that. Um, for E3 a couple of years ago, unfortunately, I couldn't see this firsthand. But um, there was a Halo environment set up in E3 many, many years ago. I think it was for promotion of Halo 5. Where um, they actually built part of, I think it was a UNSC spacecraft. And you'd walk through it, but... All of the components that would be requiring CGI or something or screens was done in with 3D images over HoloLens. So when you're looking outside the, the, the window, you'd be seeing like space with craft flowing back and forth. Well, if you looked at a briefing desk, it would look like a hologram. It would stick out like a hologram like you'd see in Halo Wars. It looked really cool. It would work. But... Um, but yeah, I, I think that that would actually do the trick. Obviously, you would require AR goggles to walk through, but I'd be okay with that. Um, I don't, I know that there's probably going to be other people talking, well, they would want a VR game or they would want laser tag. I'm kind of against that for right now for a couple of reasons. Obviously, there's been a possibility of germ transmission and stuff like that over the last you know so that was kind of been back in my mind like how can i make people do this where they don't have to interact with each other too much so that was a concern in my mind as i was going through this so i kind of nixed any ideas for laser tag or vr you know vr environment but you could bring it back if you really wanted to obviously we'd have a land cafe and where I think it would be pretty cool to have a LAN cafe, obviously you would have them preloaded with Halo games on them so you could play them on like um, either the Xbox platform or the PC platform. But it'd be a really cool spot to actually have future updates, future environments, future maps say, hey, for this month, we're going to be, you know, playing early beta of the next version of Halo Infinite. Come and check this out. That would be the perfect place to test. And to have multiplayer tests. Obviously, you'd have technicians there that, you know, oh, oh, it crashed. Okay, don't worry. Um, and then they'd just like, you know, log a crash, you know, bug and stuff like that. And be like, okay, I'll reset your game. Here you go. <laughs> that sort of thing. So we'd have that. Um, but yeah, the Land Cafe would be perfect. And of course, that's where you could serve, you know, drinks, espressos, um, small snacks, that sort of thing. Obviously, you wouldn't have too much eating in the, you know, with the, with the game, you know, in the game area, but. You could have people having a coffee or something like that, or a, a themed beverage at at that locate at that location. Then you'd have a restaurant area separate or adjacent to it, I should say. That would be for all like sandwiches and burgers and all kinds of cool themed stuff that you could think of. Next thing I'd want to have would be character meet and greets. Meet and greets would meaning like you can meet some Spartans under the guise of like you want to sign up to be a Spartan, you'd meet the Spartans kind of thing. Um, do we want to have the chief there? I don't know. I don't know. I, I know that my, that Microsoft is kind of against having the chief. They did not have the chief officially canonically appear at Outpost Discovery. There were other Spartans there that they invented. Owen and Hazel. Maybe bring back Owen and Hazel for the, for the event. That'd be fine. Um, but yeah, have, have a meet and greet with certain, with certain characters. Heck, you could have the whole the whole environment. People would be dressed up like UNSC technicians. You could have guys dressed up as UNSC Marines. You could have guys dressed up as ODST. Just have them walking around just doing random stuff. That would all be great. And finally, which is kind of the first thing I'd want people to see. I, I mentioned this last because this is kind of like a no-brainer. But this is something that I think that needs to be done. It would probably be put in the very front of the uh, place. 
have a theater show a 4D showing of the history of Halo, at least up until that point. This would be the perfect thing to show people as they're coming in. Obviously, we would take footage from the games, maybe a little bit of new footage, add some 4D effects like scents, water. Uh, obviously, it'd be a 3D show, so you might have to re-render in 3D, but it can be done. But basically, tell the story of Halo. Have it be a 15-minute show, loop it, show it throughout the day, so that people that aren't familiar with the, with, with the history of Halo or people who need a refresher on the history of Halo can can see it can refresh their memories and get pumped for basically the day at the at the at the venue. What would you call this thing? Outpost Halo? Be fine. If we want to have it take place in a on a Halo or say it is canonically happening on a Halo, do that. Obviously, what would the ticket prices be? I mean, I'd expect this thing would be big enough that it would probably have to pl take place outdoors. So we want to have it a fully enclosed theme park. Obviously, at that point, then weather would be a concern. But there's plenty of places that you can go to where weather are not so much concerns throughout the year. Um, those are just my ideas. Obviously, we want to have merchandise also sold. You can have exclusive T-shirts. You can have exclusive uh, props like energy swords, Master Chief helmets. Other color, you know, Spartan helmets. Um, you can sell DVDs, VHS, you know, Blu-ray tapes of the Halo of the Halo content. All that's a possibility. All of that is very doable. I'm cool with all of that. What do you guys think? What do you think I'm missing? What kind of rides would you want to see? Well, you guys can post a comment below with your own ideas. But um, I want to say really quickly at the very end of this video. Oh, man, I really wish how Post Discovery would come back. Some new attractions, it would be great to go back. Um, as Probably, well, obviously it would wait till after Infinite came out. But I don't know. I still have my tags. So hopefully you guys enjoyed this video. This is Maniac with GameAccess.net. Take care. Over and out.